So we know that we have these three images here and we want to change it. We're going to start with arches, we're going to go to dog and go to G. So if this is the first time through, we'll want it to change to G. So uh, I'm going to introduce an idea of a, of a, of a data structure for, for you guys. So we're going to have um, an array. And if you don't know what an array is, don't worry. It's not that big of a deal, but I can at least show you what they are. If we use an array, it's going to help us out with, um, we can reuse some of the code we've done before. So let's just pull up what an array is. We're going to do array C sharp, just to give you guys an idea, because we are using C sharp. I'm trying to see if I can find a good image of what an array might be, so I don't have to draw it out for you guys. Okay, here's, here's a good example of what an array is. So an array is basically um, a slot of memory that is, in a nutshell, it's just really nice. It's really good way to uh, store data, so we can um, so we can iterate through that data in a in a really nice way. And it groups the data together. So for instance, in this picture here, they're showing you that they there is an array. They made an array and they put one, two, three. They put four elements in it. Now arrays always start at element zero and they go to one, two, and three, and four, five, six, to the nth, but we always start at zero. So in looking at an array, if we go back to our C sharp, we can put these elements in an array of sprites, and then we can iterate through them here. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of having this right here, we're going to create a public sprite and then to start an array we're going to do brackets open and close brackets oh we have to give it a name so we're going to call it um, my sprites I'm going to uh, I'm going to comment this code out and this is a new concept if you comment code out it pretty much means that it's it's it commented out means that, that that when it compiles it will skip this and it's gray because this will never be seen so when I save this back in our script in unity you shouldn't see this anymore you'll see this and we'll show you that file save all go back here make sure it's compiling I have no errors, that's good. Let's go back to our canvas. And if we look, now we have this base for my sprites and we know we're gonna have three of them, right? This is where we're gonna tell how big that array is gonna be. So we're gonna put three, because we're gonna have a size of three and enter. And now I have three spots to put my sprites. So let's go ahead and put arches in the first slot, dog in the second. Oh, no, dog in the second. Let's try that again. And then we're going to put the G, which is download two. We're going to put it in the uh, third element. Again, it starts at zero, so we got zero, one, and two. Okay. Now let's go back to our code. And what we can do again, we know we have three elements. So if my integer is less than four, we can do. Um, so my, my, my integer is at one, and then it's gonna be two, and then it's gonna be three, and then it's gonna be four, okay? So what we wanna do is if the first time it comes through, we, we wanna make sure that this shows a different picture, right? So let's just try some code. I know how we do it, but I want to see you guys to see how to think through this. So let's just go ahead after this line, Let's make my image. Um, my image dot, I think, sprite equals, and we have an array of my sprites. 
open bracket and we're gonna say uh, we're gonna use the integer and I'll explain this after we're finished why I'm doing it this way I'm gonna copy this line and then I'm going to do the same thing here file save all and we're gonna run let's just see if this runs I don't know I'm kinda of doing this on the fly let's see if this runs it compiled right no errors good let's run let's see what happens it should start with arches and then go through them so I hit button oh something got stuck And it says array index is out of range, and I know what's happening. Let's walk through our code. We'll talk through it together. So array arrays are something new for you guys. So I just want to uh, kind of explain what happens here. When you have an array, I'll go back in Unity and look. I told it that it had a size of three, which it did, and it gave me a place to put arches, a place to put dog, a place to put download. And again, arrays always start at zero, and the next element's one and two. It never starts at one. Always starts at zero. Okay, so let's go back to our script. And the first time we go through, we know that my int equals one. So it's going to say, okay, let's, what is in the first element or the, or the first space? Well, if we go back and look, first space is dog. So it showed the dog. Let's go back to our script. Then it added one. When I hit the button again, it looked into the my sprites that had element two. Well, let's look. Element two is this one. That's the, it's the G, it's the download image. So we go back again. So now we're at, um, so now we're at element three. It goes back, it's four. But when it goes through here, it says it's looking for, um, zero. Uh, oh, it, it's three. So when it goes back through here, it's looking for three, but there is no element three if you see that so what we need to do is we need to fix this so one way we can do to fix this <clears throat> so again let, let, I'm gonna recap and go back through this to show you guys uh, what happened first time it goes through the element is my int is one so when it reads this line of the of my sprites it's looking for the first element element one of my sprites if we look back at our Unity, the f element one is dog. So it changes it to, to dog. Then it's gonna add one to it. So now we're at two. It comes back through. It's gonna be looking for my sprites of two. So this element two of my sprites. Element two here is the download images of the G. Then it adds one more, right? It comes back through. Now it's three. Three is still less than four. So it's gonna hit this code. And when it does, it says, okay, this is going to, we're going to put in my image dot sprite is going to be equal to the third element or element three of my sprites. Well, if you look here, there is no element three. So I'm getting an error that index out of range ex exception, error index is out of range. And it was because it's saying that I have an element of three and I really don't. So it gave me the error. So to fix that, what we need to do is we need to subtract one from this math. So if you look here, we're going to put my integer minus one, my int minus one. So that's going to take the my int, it's going to subtract one. So in this case, first time it's going through, it's going to be zero. And it's going to be zero. And then it's going to be two. And then it's going to be three. So let's see how this works. We subtract one, file, save all, come here. Is it going to compile? It does. It clears out everything. Let's see if this works now. We're going to play. Hit the button. It's the arches. The next one should be the bulldog, and then it should be the G, and then go back to the arches. Bulldog. There you go. So that's just one way to do this, and it satisfies the task that we wanted for that. So after this tutorial, you should have a pretty good idea of how to bring in some of your standard UI elements, button, 
text and a G. And there's other things you can do with this uh, to level up on this variant. You could have an image associated with your button, right? Because if we look over here in the hierarchy, we have a button here and the button can also take an image as well. If we hit this, we can actually choose from different different UI elements too. Okay, we could do some of these. So you could change buttons, you can change the color. If you look at the button, you have a normal color, you have a highlighted color. This is the color it, it, it changes when we're, we press it. We have, a, I mean, our, when we hover over it, uh, rather, and then press is the color that changes when we press it. As you can see that, you can change that. You have a disabled color. Um, so yeah, so that's one way, that's, that's another way you can do it. This text element, uh, text element here, it can have shaders and you can also put this text, you could have, you know, color behind it as well if you wanted. You would just put the text as part of an image. Uh, and then you know how to put a UI image in. So, so yeah, uh, after this tour, you should be able to do these pr pretty easily and write some basic code to get it. Um, I'll put the code, uh, I'll accompany this code uh, with this video. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, it will be in the comment section or there'll be a link to how to download this in the comment section. If you're, if you're not, you can email me uh, directly and I will send you the code that, we, that we've written for this tutorial. So, uh, so yeah, that, that wraps it up for this tutorial. This is uh, part three of the Hello World series. Um, so let's look at... So yeah, so <clears throat> so an, another variant you can do is you can change these thing guys to make them look differently, but you can also uh, do these things at random. You can have more than three images, and I'll leave it to you guys. Google it. Go go to the Unity website or the Unity document the documentation or C Sharp doc documentation, and look at how you can pick things at random from a data set. And then see if you can implement some random stuff. Make these images be random. Make the text be random. Uh, and that'd be a good variant for you to do. So uh, in the next uh, tutorial series, we're going to... Uh, we're going to try and recreate this Hello World, and we may start from this point in the Hello World, but we're going to be looking more at our canvas, and we're going to start using panels, UI panels, and we're going to start looking at the importance of using these UI panels. Um, one of the important things about using UI panels is that we can, it gives us an easy way to target and stretch our resolution or make our resolution match for different devices. So if you're using iOS devices and you, you don't want to redevelop or recode for different screens like your iPad Pro or even a, an older phone, you don't have to worry about that. Unity will take care of that if you set up your UI elements correctly with panels and with UI anchors. So, and, and in part of that tutorial, we are going to explore that and then we're going to try and uh, deploy to an iOS device. Now, if you're wanting to do Android, we'll, I will have a separate tutorial series for the Android or that will accompany these different parts in the iOS. So again, thanks for, thanks for tuning in, guys, and looking at this. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can email me or comment. And I'll see you in the next series. Thanks. Have a good night. Have a good day. So again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email or comment, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial session. Thanks. Bye.